Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike Carrick Game from Scratch, and today we have another classic Canadian doofer. Uh, we've got two programs that are both open sourced, both incredibly cool, both previously featured on this channel, and amazingly enough, both written using Godot. Uh, first one we're going to look at is Material Maker. The second one is Pixelorama. Now, I'm not going to go into a ton of depth on either program because, quite frankly, I've covered both on the channel. But I want you guys to be aware of them, what they provide, and there was just recent updates in the last week. So we'll go into the details of what has changed. So the first one we're going to do hands-on. We're going to do hands-on with both programs so you know what we're talking about. Then we'll get into what actually changed this week. The first one we are talking about is Material Maker. Now, this one gets a lot of updates. And quite frankly, I am a big fan of Material Maker. You can see it in action in front of you. Not a lot of love going on right now. So let's open up an example that comes with this. So let's load a material in. It comes with a bunch of them out of the box. So let's go with the ray marching example. So here you can see a bunch of nodes going together to ultimately create a material. We can turn the material on in the background right here, or you can click a particular node and you can see a preview of it over here uh, of the end result. Uh, you can also do it individuals. Uh, you can see the uh, source that that particular node generates. And what you're seeing here is you use a network of nodes to basically create materials. Once you've got a material you actually like, what you do is come on up here and just do an export. And you're going to notice this is a very game engine focused tool because you can export out your textures to tools such as Godot, Unity, the Unity high definition rendering pipeline, or to the Unreal game engine. So you get game engine ready exports directly from Material Maker. So what you could really Look at this as it's kind of a free and also yes open source both of the tools we are covering today are completely open source as we will see in just a moment tool that is like substance designer now it doesn't come even close to the scope of substance designer but then again substance designer has a team of probably hundreds of people behind it this is the open source project of one guy and he is updating it at a staggering rate adding more and more really cool features here so if you want to create textures this is a great tool for it so let's, for example let's look at a couple of different ones. Here's crocodile skin being generated. There you can see the results. There's the simple graph that went ahead and made it. Let's go look at another one. So we've got in here, say, uh, bricks. And create a brick texture uh, quite simply. You see here you've got normal mapping details, and you can see up by the output. You're, you're exporting on a full PBR-based rendering workflow, so albedo, metallic, roughness, emission, normal map, and so on. All these various different pieces can go together to create it. So for example, here you can see a normal map is being created by uh, first off, we start with a noise value. You can see the preview right there and a modular brick pattern. Blend those two together. You get this. Blend those two together with uh, the black and white value here. You've got that. Colorize it like so. Or you could take the same result here. We piped it out to the normal mapping. That converts it into a normal map. And then you can see it being applied over here. You can check the intensity of everything by doing so right there, the amount of uh, effect that that map will have on the results. Uh, you can pick how to export your material out for anywhere from 64 by 64 up to 4K textures. And yeah, that's kind of the idea here. Over here we had, oh, I, I, I've hidden it. There's a little bit more of the UI that I've closed down because I don't actually use this part very often. Oh, I might have found a bug. Oh, no, you can get it back. All right. Uh, there's a, an outline view over here. Not something that I find incredibly useful personally. Over on this side, you have your various different palettes of nodes. These are ultimately shaders. You can drop them in, create your own. Watch some of my earlier videos on Material Maker for more details on that one. But let's say over here, we want to start with a pattern. We want to make, say, a brick pattern. We got a couple of different options under the brick category. We got tiles, herringbone, and so on. So let's drop in a herringbone. So there you can see, you click that guy, you can see the results of it right there. We've got a number of different controls on it. So the number of repetitions, uh, the number of... Uh, Find these slider notes. There we go. The number of rows, the number of columns, the number of repetitions, and so on. You see, again, the preview of it down here. Um, then what you can do is you could add some noise in. Uh, so let's say we wanted to have a Veroni noise down here. Again, you click that one. And then we could do a, is it a mix or is it an add? Let's try a mix. Drop a mix in here. Uh, no, it's not a mix. It's an add. Add, hmm, blend? Yeah, blend, all right, we'll do a blend. So we'll blend uh, these two guys, so let's drop that in there. Uh, so we got brick one here, we'll drop that out into the source. Uh, Veroni, and we got that out, and we'll drop that into the source, click there. So there you see our blend of those two values together. And you can change the value of each one, like so. 
And then you just kind of keep building these complex nodes out. And then your ultimate output is this guy over here. So this case, we haven't really done too much. Let's drop this into, let's drop that into the depth math and see what that actually does. Man, nah, not much. Oh, it's not turned on. Anyways, there you go. So there we've made a, a really funky image going on there. And that is the gist of Material Maker. And again, when you're done with this guy, all these various different nodes and such that are here, you basically can save out the material using Material Maker format, or you can export it to your game engine of choice. And again, all of these nodes, everything you see over here, I think it is GLSL, but it might actually be um, Godot's kind of custom script language on top of it. But basically, these are all just scripts and file folders if you want to extend things yourself. Uh, some really nice stuff in this tool. I, I highly recommend that you check this guy out, especially if you are looking for procedural material generation. Now, the other one we're looking at today is something called Pixelrama. This is, again, built using Godot. It's actually really obvious if you... Uh uh, when you download it, the icon, literally, it, it looks like Godot. Uh, but you can see here, it is a pixel painting application. You've got your simple tools over here, paintbrush and so on. You'll notice you've got on the left-hand side, a draw on the right-hand side, eraser. That's the left and right tool. You can swap those around, change what they do, change the setting for each individual tool. So you can have a different tool map to the left, a different tool map to the right. And then you can basically just do fixed palette painting. You can have multiple different palettes. You can switch between different palettes. So if we want to do like a shades palette, for example, uh, bubblegum 16 palette here, select something. There's the left click to draw, right click to, I thought right click was on a race, but it might, might, must not be. Um, and you can switch tools over here. So let's go grab the erase tool here, apply it on the left. I don't know why Erase isn't doing what I want it to, but anyways, uh, you can see that is kind of the gist of the program. And one of those things that you can see down here, we've got a normal timeline. Uh, so I can do is uh, create new frames and we'll add them over time. So you can see we're at frame one. I'll do a clone frame. So each one is sort of the same thing. So now we have a seven frame animation. I can switch between them. So now I'm on frame two. So frame one here, let's go ahead. We'll increase the size of our brush a bit. We'll create red and I will just go ahead and do my natural ball animation, like so. Frame three, frame four. By the way, there is full onion skinning. It is one of these guys down here. There we go. So we can actually see as we switch between frames, we can see an onion skin of the previous frame. So let's go here to frame five. Five, six. And then finally seven. All right, there we go. So now we can go back to the beginning. I'm not sure why my onion skinning didn't turn on. Doesn't really matter. We can set it to loop there. You set the frame rate right here, and then you can basically play your animation like so. Um, and that is Pixelorama, essentially. It is an animation and drawing application. Uh, when you are done with it, so you got tools here, obviously, for changing colors, outline the gradient colors, cropping, resizing, and so on. Uh, your, your standard selections over here, and then you can uh, export out. And you got a decent number of options on your exports. Uh, where did we go for the options? So uh, I can't do it right now. Anyways, that is uh, Pixelrama. Pretty straightforward on this particular tool. It is a pixel animation and um, drawing kind of application. Again, both of these were written using the Godot game engine, which is pretty cool. You also have support for multiple different layers, by the way. So if you want to have uh, a layer before or back, if you want to have the sky be uh, animated separately or whatever, you can do that there as well. All right, so now we'll go over to the details on them. Both of these are available on itch.io. I will link to both of them as well. Uh, Mirtero Maker has binaries available for Windows and Linux. Again, this is a free and open source project, but it is uh, donation-based if you want to help support them. Uh, the one that we're looking at today is uh, Material Maker 0.93. Uh, we got a, a number of improvements across the board. I'm not going to really get into a ton of different here, but one of the cool new features is 3D Preview now supports custom 3D meshes uh, in OBJ format. Uh, that is definitely cool. Uh, and so instead of just having, you know, uh, a sphere or a, a cube or whatever. You got uh, multiple different options in there. Uh, you, UI frame per second and so on. Truth of the matter is this guy is increasing at such a staggering rate that uh, just uh, head on here. Like you see here, we got a bunch of new and updated nodes and so on. Just keep an eye on Material Maker. It, it improves rapidly. I, I'm really impressive project for sure. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, this is an open source project up on GitHub. I will link to the GitHub page as well in the linked article. You see here, this one is under the MIT based license. Now in Pixelrama's case, uh, this particular version, so you can see here, one of the cool things about it, although it's not showcasing well on the uh, 
the Zoom level I've got here, uh, but you can actually run it directly on their website. So if you don't want to download it yourself, you can actually try it completely free uh, or completely download free uh, by running it right here. Uh, right here in their browser. It's the exact same version, exact same functionality. Uh, definitely worth checking out there. Um, in terms of what is new in this particular release, uh, let's see, we'll go down here. So this is 0.8.1. Uh, buttons for moving current frame left to right. Uh, created palette from sprites has been enhanced. Uh, now has a cut option or control X um, and so on. And perhaps most importantly of all, there is now a purple theme, which if you can tell by the website, is actually one of the hardest things in the world to actually read. Uh, Pixelorama itself is also open source and also MIT license. It's actually kind of amazing the, the similarities between these two projects. They're both updated quite consistently. They're both written um, using the Godot game engine. Uh, they're both game development tools and they're both under the MIT license on GitHub. Uh, so definitely nice there. And let's head on back over here. Let's see what picks, uh, what purple actually looks like. So come here, uh, which one are your themes? Purple. That is hideous. <laughs> that is absolutely terrible. Uh, but there is a new option. By the way, both of the tools, as you saw from right there, we've got theming support right here. So if you want to have a light theme, that is an option you've got. That is that is really painful to look at, to be honest. And then, of course, we come over. Oops, wrong guy. Uh, we come over here to Material Maker, and it also has Preferences menu. Uh, Okay, no, they put the theme somewhere else. Let me try and find. I know this guy definitely has theme support as well. Oh, set theme. It's right above there. So you've got dark default and light. So if you want to switch, you have a light option there as well. So another um, similarity between the two programs. Anyways, that is all we are going to cover today. These two applications both updated this week. Both are actually updated quite consistently, which is why I threw them both together in a singular video. But if you haven't checked out either yet, I highly recommend checking out both. They are both open source, both free, both Godot powered, and both quite cool. All right, that's it for now. Let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.